11 things you should never do with a narcissist. Harm reduction with toxic manipulators by Shahida Arabi. Throughout the years that I've spent researching emotional abuse as a self-help author, I've communicated with thousands of survivors of narcissistic individuals, as well as many manipulation experts. I've learned that there are certain things you should avoid doing with a narcissist in order to practice harm reduction if you are currently in a relationship with someone you believe lacks empathy. Narcissistic individuals follow certain patterns of behavior that thankfully are predictable enough that we can establish some general guidelines for people who may be encountering one for the first time or even for people who suspect they've been entrenched in an abuse cycle with a manipulator. A narcissist's arsenal of manipulation tactics include behaviors such as 1. Love bombing, devaluation, and manufacturing love triangles, as well as pitting people against one another. As therapist Andrea Schneider writes, love bombing is when the narcissistic person may smother the target with praise, courting, intense sex, vacations, promises of a future together, and designation, essentially as the most special person ever. Narcissists later devalue their targets as they push them off the pedestal. Dr. Dale Archer explains that devaluation becomes a tool to keep the victim isolated and dependent. Each time the devalued partner has to work harder to get back in the love bomber's good graces, usually by sacrificing something that competes with him for attention. Narcissists can also cre create triangles in families and the workplace, pitting people against one another to get a sense of power, validation, and control. Number two, lashing out in narcissistic rage when they are exposed in some way or confronted, or when they perceive a slight to their grandiose sense of self. When narcissists feel like you are questioning their false sense of superiority, they quote unquote, suffer what is known as a narcissistic injury and subsequently narcissistic rage. They attempt to punish the target who speaks out against them. As Dr. Mark, Mark Golston writes, hell hath no fury or contempt as a narcissist you dare to disagree with. What is at the core of narcissists is not what is often referred to as low self-esteem. What is really at the core of narcissists is an instability in their ability to feel and sustain feeling bigger, larger, smarter, and more successful than everyone else which they need to feel stable. Number three, ruining special occasions because it takes the focus off of them. Narcissists need to be front and center and they need to turn the focus back on them. This means they will actively try to sabotage celebrations and holidays just so they can take center stage. As Dr. Sherry Steins notes, narcissists have a tendency to practice seasonal devalue and discard during the holidays, focusing these abuse tactics on their nearest targets and closest partners. Why do they do this? Because they have no empathy and cannot handle intimate relationships and are compelled to do what it takes to destroy them. Now, based on these behaviors and more, here are 11 things you should never do with a narcissist if you can help it. Number one, never travel with them or go on a promised quote unquote dream vacation. Narcissists are notorious for abandoning their victims in foreign countries and making dream destinations a trip to hell. I've heard from survivors who've been devalued on should, what should have been the most special times in their lives. For example, their honeymoon. Vacations may initially serve as a platform for love bombing, but they later disintegrate into sites to isolate and further degrade the partner. Be wary of any partner who exhibits any of the red flags of narcissism asking you to a romantic getaway, whether it be to Italy or California. They are looking for ways to get you alone so there aren't any witnesses to their abusive behavior, no one to rescue you. Whether that be grooming or verbal 
psychological, or even sexual and physical abuse. Number two, never spend holidays, special celebrations, or your birthday with the narcissist. Narcissists are infamous in sabotaging events which would make you happy and take the attention off of them. Remember, they don't like that. Do not disclose when you are meeting an important deadline or have an interview either. They will try to ruin it. As Dr. Ramani Dervasula advises, if you have that partner that doesn't listen, if you have that boss that's sabotaging you, if you have that friend who's chronically not compassionate, when you have something good happen to you or something you want a sounding board for, don't take it to them. Number three, don't attend get-togethers with their friends or large groups unless you really are trying to investigate their behavior in social settings and you want to learn how they interact with these people. Narcissists use these activities to create love triangles and to flirt with others in front of you in order to get you to vie for their attention. This is known as triangulation. The trauma of this type of triangulation and knowledge of their harem can be devastating. If you can, refuse invites to attend social gatherings with the narcissist. It will only cause more pain and a sense of alienation as the narcissist charms the crowd while devaluing you. Number four, don't attend activities that involve your family or the narcissist's family. Again, this is a prime site for triangulation. In addition, narcissists can and will provoke you behind closed doors to make you appear unhinged or emotional to their family and friends while they play the calm, collected partner. Don't give them the opportunity to depict you in this manner. If you do have to attend a family gathering of theirs for any reason, make sure you remain calm and only speak the facts. Number five, don't give in to their love bombing attempts. As we spoke about before, love bombing is a way for the narcissist to fast forward emotional and physical intimacy. Don't let them. Slow down interactions with them as they try to speed up intimacy and manufacture a false connection. Never allow them to overwhelm you with the intensity of love bombing or constant contact. In fact, see it as a red flag. Don't respond to every text, every phone call, or request for every in-person meeting right away. This will ensure you have enough time and space to yourself to remain detached as you observe their behavior long term. Number six, do not give them loans, do not accept any financial help from them, and do not sign contracts with them. Do not sign a lease with them or cohabitate. Do not get a pet with them and avoid having children with them if possible. Do not make large purchases with them. Do not accept large gifts or depend on them. Having any kind of financial ties to a narcissist will only work against you in the long run. There is no such thing as a quote unquote free gift with an abuser. You will always pay in more ways than one. Number seven, do not let them speak freely without documentation. If you're in any kind of business deal with a narcissist or you're experiencing any kind of manipulation, stalking, or harassment from a narcissist, don't let the narcissist contact you through phone calls or in person. Instead, stick to emails, texts, voicemails. And if you are having an in-person meetings, if the laws in your state permit it, record the individual or bring a witness. Documentation is very important should you ever want to bring a legal case against an abuser or if you just want to simply resist their gaslighting attempts because you'll have a record of what was actually said and what actually happened. Number eight, don't attend couples counseling with them or tell them what you're up to, especially if you plan to leave them. As I wrote about in a previous article, there are many reasons why couples counseling with a narcissist is sure to fail including the fact that they use everything you say in the therapy room against you and use the therapy space as a site for further gaslighting and triangulation. It's best to go to individual trauma-focused counseling instead and prepare behind the scenes to leave your abuser rather than disclosing what you feel like doing or will do because that will only give the narcissist ammunition and let him or her prepare beforehand, right? Giving the narcissist information about what you will do next only gives them 
the extra weaponry to derail you. If you plan to divorce a narcissist, for example, don't tell them right away until you've already gathered all the necessary paperwork, made a safety plan for you and your children, consulted with a divorce lawyer who is well versed in high conflict personalities, and managed all your finances, right? You have to get your finances in a separate bank account together. They will try to sabotage your attempts to leave them, so don't tell them beforehand. Number nine, never confront them with the fact that they're a narcissist if you can help it. If you try to tell a narcissist that they are a narcissist, they will inevitably lash out in rage as they are prone to do, or worse, they will punish you for exposing them. They will also resort to major gaslighting and more love bombing to win you back and make you think that they've changed. This only keeps you stuck in the abuse cycle. Don't give them any space for any pity ploys or love bombing. Instead, or retaliation. Instead, focus your energy on detaching from and exiting from the relationship safely. Number 10, do not disclose your deepest wounds, insecurities, traumas, and fears. Self-disclosure is a healthy part of any relationship, and it can increase intimacy with a healthy, empathic partner. But with a narcissist, it becomes ammunition in a battleground. Narcissistic individuals will use everything and anything you disclose to them against you. That means everything you shared with them will inevitably be thrown back at you to paint you as unstable, crazy, or losing it. Instead, take your time to build a sense of organic trust with someone and let their actions and patterns tell you whether they are even trustworthy enough to have the privilege to hear your life stories. And finally, number 11. Do not ask them for help in a crisis. As we know, narcissistic individuals lack empathy and they demonstrate excessive entitlement. In past articles, I've written about some of the horror stories survivors have experienced and lived through as they were callously abandoned by or bullied by narcissistic individuals during some of the worst moments of their lives, in times of grief, loss, and even life-threatening illnesses and pregnancies. If you are lucky to have a support network outside of the narcissist or can find one in your community, rely on them during times of crisis. Do not let the narcissistic individual t know what you are going through if you can help it. They will only make the situation worse and terrorize you further. The big picture. If you have been targeted by a narcissist, know that this is not your fault. Narcissists enjoy bullying those who evoke their pathological envy, and they enjoy associating themselves with those they deem quote-unquote special and unique. If you have been a target, there are ways to practice harm reduction as you find ways to, to detach from and hopefully ultimately exit from the relationship safely. Learn about the red flags and the associated behaviors of these toxic types and you can hopefully prevent some emotional damage as you pave the path back to freedom. I'm Shahida Arabi and thank you for listening in. I hope this article has helped you. If you have more tips, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below on some of the things that you should never do with a narcissist and some of the things you can do to help enhance your safety and exiting from this type of toxic relationship. I hope to talk to you soon and until next time, take care.